The Subcommittee on Water, Power, and Oceans will come to order. The Water, Power, and Oceans Subcommittee meets today to hear testimony on an oversight hearing entitled Modernizing Western Water and Power Infrastructure in the 21st Century. And before we start with our opening statements, I just want to welcome everyone here, and I want to welcome members of the subcommittee for being here. We're going to do some important things. I'm learning these issues uh, every day. There's so much to learn on water, power, and oceans. So I'm excited about that prospect, and we will be on this journey together, and I appreciate that also. So we'll start with opening statements, and um, I'll start myself. Today marks the subcommittee's first hearing in this Congress and the beginning of our efforts to incentivize the creation of new water and power infrastructure. Before we begin a substantive discussion on this topic, I once again welcome all our subcommittee members. I'm honored to return and assume the chair of this historic subcommittee. It's my hope that we can agree on many things. And when we don't agree, I hope that we do so with collegiality and polite discourse. I'm sure we will. This subcommittee has a lot of importance to my congressional district, which includes many utilities and military installations that receive water and emissions-free hydropower from federal water projects. In fact, we will later hear today from a witness testifying on behalf of the Colorado Springs Utilities, which has provided water from four transbasins diversions as pictured above on the screen, and electricity sold by the Western Area Power Administration. For generations, utilities throughout the West have depended on these projects, and they will continue to do so well into this century. Yet many of these facilities are aging, and it's getting increasingly hard to build new projects. Meanwhile, the West continues to grow in population, and the sometimes conflicting pressures on a finite amount of water only mount. And when we have an abundance of water, like in many areas this year, we are unable to capture enough of it due to lack of adequate reservoirs. Our constituents deserve solutions, and that's why we're here today. We can and should have an all-of-the-above strategy on water, just like we should on energy. The framework has already been started with the historic enactment of the bipartisan WIN Act last year. I look forward to working with the Bureau of excuse me, Reclamation on its implementation. But that was only just one step of many that we need to take. Not only do we need to look into the future to construct new water storage, but we must also ensure that our existing water and power facilities are taken care of and that our federal agencies are transparent since most of their costs are passed on to ratepayers. We cannot rely on the federal government to build all of the new infrastructure, though, especially given limited taxpayer dollars, federal regulations, and other factors. That's exactly why we need to remove some of the excessive federal barriers so that non-federal utilities and entrepreneurs can step in to fill the void. It's disturbing that federal studies for new storage or hydropower relicensing processes last for decades. We put a man on the moon in eight years. So we need to have the political will again to get things done. Our constituents deserve nothing less, and I believe we can still achieve win-wins on having a clean environment as well as having infrastructure. In conclusion, I thank our witnesses for being here today. I welcome those from the American Public Power Association and the Association of California Water Agencies, and I welcome the rest of the audience as well. And I look forward to working with my colleagues on this historic endeavor.